McHale who gets the catch. He's got patrol. From the high school of the Montamini Zephyrs under the foothills of St. Andrews Lutheran Church, it's Metro East basketball tonight as the Montamini Zephyrs play host to the North High Polars. Welcome inside the gymnasium here at Montamini High School. My name is Alex Weston, and joining us tonight, a new face and a new member of the SCC Sports family. It's a coworker of mine, not Mike Peden, as you saw there briefly on the Twitter. It is a colleague of mine at Cyber Village Academy in St. Paul, Minnesota, Jordan Gustafson. Jordan, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you very much, Alex. I look forward to being here. Now, Jordan, as the starting lineups are being introduced tonight, tell the folks at home a little bit about your basketball experience and what led you to join me here today. Uh, well, let's see here. I played basketball throughout high school. Just kind of, um, I don't know, thought it would be fun and, I don't know, exciting, I guess. Well, we certainly hope that you have a fantastic time tonight here as the Zephyrs and the Polars are introduced. Now, Jordan, as somebody who's coming into this matchup between two conference opponents for the first time, we've got a chance to look at paper to see how these two teams have developed. Montemidai at 6-6, six 2-2 six, two two in the Metro East, North High at 6-7, and seven, but a perfect record in the Metro East. What stood out to you looking at these teams on paper? You know, honestly, we've got a couple of really good scorers here. We've got... Uh, Got Brody Fox coming in at 17.7 points per game. That's nothing to frown at. And you've got, on the other side of that, you've got Shahid Muhammad coming at, at 19.5 points per game. Not too shabby either. So a lot of things to look forward to as the lineups are still continuing to be introduced. If it's your first time watching high school basketball here in the state of Minnesota, a reminder, it's two halves of 18 minutes of time. And the... Person who, or the team rather, who has the most points at the end of the game, of course, wins the game, he says, sounding like Booker McFarland on a normal Monday night broadcast for yeah. ESPN. Yeah. And as we <laughs> await the teams to get set here, we'll take a quick look at the Metro East standings. You see there, North St. Paul currently in there at second place behind the Tartan Titans, a very good and very talented Tartan club at 12 and 1. Meanwhile, Matamidi right in the middle, 2 and 2, and a 6 and 6 record overall. You see there are many of the regular suspects in their usual spots. Again, Tartan near the top, Henry Sibley and Hill Murray near the bottom. Although St. Thomas Academy surprising at 1 and 12 overall and a conference record of 1 and 4. And so as the opening tip is underway here, the players shake hands, do all their traditional introductions. Luke Ricker starting at center tonight. He'll take the opening tip here for the Matamidi Zephyrs wearing their robe, home blue uniforms, rather. Meanwhile, on the other side for the North Polars, it'll be the senior Aaron Murray. 6-4 faces off against 6-5, and the opening tip is underway. One by Matamidi. Schulte, a quick bucket in, looking for contact. Too strong off the glass from Brody Fox. It's in and out, and the Polars will have a chance to set up here in the front court. It'll be Brandon Langford working with the ball at the point guard position tonight for the senior. Working it here onto the near wing, back to the point. Quick ball movement here from the North Polars. Oh, pass there, tip back in front. It goes out of bounds. Good and tip. it looks as though it'll stay in the possession of the Matamidi Zephyrs. That was, that was a nice tip. Good defense out there. They look like they're quick and ready to be out there and play. It looks like it'll be North High ball from on their side of the court. Inbound will be the Langford. It'll be Laron Thomas who gives it back for Langford as they'll regain into the court. Early going here. Zephyrs and the Polars, Metro East Conference rivals between two schools that are routinely in the top conversation. A three ball from deep goes too strong. Rebound gathered up by the Polars off the glass and in. The rebound for Sean West Simple and the early two buckets to give the Polars a two to nothing lead. Meanwhile, Matamida, ooh, almost over and back that time for Fox. The steal back the other way, and slam! Oh, wow. Down it goes! Laurent Thomas with the dunk. Ooh, that was impressive. Oh, man, I'm excited. 
Zephyrs trying to get around the full court press here by North High. They'll go all the way back out to the wing that time for Fox, looking further lower around the arc. And we see Jordan here over time. A change in high school basketball where more teams tend to focus on the three-point line as opposed to driving in basketball. What do you think made that change possible? You know, I, I think just a lot of off-season practicing, right? I mean, it's all about increasing that range and and obviously your accuracy has to go along with that. Will Underwood with the buckets, 4-2 to two North St. Paul lead, 16-22 remaining, opening half of play. And for Johnson, great ball movement by the Polar is a three too strong as it hit the backboard that time off of John. John West Zimple and in there for the Polars as they extend their lead. Again, the full court pressure applied by North. Strong pass further up ahead, interior pass, try to go Ooh. off the glass, but it goes behind, but a foul called, and the Zephyrs will head to the line. Yeah, you know, he was close to getting that block there, but just a little bit of hand on that. It's the first foul of the contest for either team as it goes against the North Polars. And at the line shooting two will be Austin Schulte, the 6'3 senior guard. Converts the first opportunity and we'll have some substitutions here. It's coming into the game. Cole Chapman will replace will be Aaron Moriarty who were, he replaces the big man. We were impressed with how he was shooting in the warm-up. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's always nice when you can see a big guy being able to shoot from outside and increase his range. Six to three. North Polar's lead. Great ball moving again by North. There's a ball just a little bit too strong there. Rebound gathered up here by West Simple. Zimple back to the point this time. Brandon Langford. Langford working it here on the near wing for Thomas. Back again here for West Zimple. Great ball moving again. This is impressive around the arc here for North. Goes all the way here now and a chance Ooh. drive into the lane. Shabahid Muhammad dishes the ball back out. Ooh, and good closeout defense that time by the Zephyrs. Great ball movement. Langford, he got it for three. There it was. Now, if you're Matamidi here, Jordan, and you see how well the North High Polars are moving the ball around the perimeter, what's your defense to that? You know, I think the strategy is they've, they've really just got to be guarding the interior. Um, you know, once they do that, they can focus more on the exterior, but Obviously, they've got a lot of big guys here. They can drive the ball in just like that, right? Um, ooh, hold on. Stop it. We're going to get a foul called here. It's on the arm. It looks like it'll be a foul this time. It'll get called on Aaron Murphy. That's his first, second team foul for Matamidi. And the ball will be on the baseline. On the inbound, Cole Chapman will throw. Chapman, look further for Fox, try to go further again on the breakout, and they'll spring it here to the near side for Will Underwood. Underwood trying to work through traffic interior pass, and he'll advise at that out of bounds, it'll be North Ball. Oh man, there it was too, that, that was a perfect pass, he was wide open down there, just couldn't quite hang on to it. Inbound here, 9-3 to three the score, 14-48 remaining, alongside Jordan Gustafson, Alex Westhead here from Matamidi High School, between Two schools, Metro East rivals, former SEC rivals for one, driving the lane, Muhammad, big pass out here to the outlet wing. So continue to move that ball around the perim perimeter, interior pass looking for Murphy again, another great ball this time. West Zimple further along that time for Thomas. Thomas pass here looking for Muhammad, Muhammad from three point land, no good. And the rebound gathered to again here quickly by Cal Green for the Zephyrs. Interior pass looking for the foul. No good. Rebounded by North St. Paul. And the battle on the glass tending to be favoring. North as a drive to the lane. Lankford does not get the foul out of bounds. And the Zephyrs will have it. Yeah, no foul called there. Definitely, Alex. He stood straight up and just let the guy come into him. So that's what you got to do. LaRon Thomas with four for the Polars. Brandon Lankford with a three. As his efforts will look to evade this full court press. Now, Jordan, if you're a team who's trying to create some pressure by employing the full court press this early, what's your strategy to do that? I mean, just get up big early. Um, you know, if, if you can make some stops early on, you're definitely going to take control of the glass, take control of the clock. Um, you know, really just, honestly, at that point, you're just controlling the whole game, right? So, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to try to do that as early as possible. Underwood air balls a three attempt, goes out of bounds. It'll be North High ball. It's so only early going for Matamidi, only three points on the board. Underwood the only two, as you see head coach Damian Johnson, a former Minnesota golfer here in his third season. An impressive record so far through his three seasons, 45 and 23. 
winning almost two times as two thirds of the games that he play or coaches. There's a ball passed back to the perimeter. They're working around again. Big drive this time. Brandon Hickman, he's got it to go from three point land. And another three ball that falls for the North Polars. Back into the full court press. Foul on the interior on Ricker. The foul will go here against LaRon Thomas. That'll be his first team third. And again, foul trouble perhaps an issue here so far for North as they've been very aggressive, but they haven't been playing clean. No, absolutely, Alex. You definitely got to take control and watch yourself. Um, you know, you're a huge value to your team, right, if you can, if you can play good defense. But, yeah, getting in foul trouble early is going to hurt. Cal Green had it go off his hands on a nice defensive play by Sean West Zimple. It'll stay here. Zephyr ball, 13.03 remaining. In this opening half, 12 to three, a North High Polar's lead as the ball gets passed back into the backcourt where those efforts can go back to reset. Will Underwood sent further down and low on the wing for Cal Green. Back to the point as they'll go all the way back around the arc. Zephyr's working the perimeter. Very deep ball. Too strong off the iron. Rebound gathered to that time by Underwood. Underwood from the elbow puts it in. And that's another two points for Underwood, giving him four on the night. And the Polars now lead by a score of 12 to 5. Langford works it again here further now for Thomas. Back further for West Simple. Thomas. All the way too strong, out of bounds into the Montemayor bench, and an unforced error that time for North High. Yeah, they played pretty good perimeter defense on that one, just causing a rushed pass, and it just happened to sail over his head. From the sideline here, Zephyrs are able to get the ball back in. Goes further now for Ricker, all the way back. Brody Fox to play it. Brady Fox, Brody Fox rather, excuse me, brother of Parker Fox, a former Matamita Zephyr player, and a good chance with the ball here. Chapman picked up his foot, so he's got a pivot. Goes all the way back. And a good job there by the Zephyrs. Great pressure here again by North and Ty Hill to force it. Here's Cole Chapman looking for drive. Great pressure on him, too. Outside pass, 4-3. It's good. And the Zephyrs back on the scoreboard. Some very excited young fans here right next to us. They kind of block our corner, so we can't quite see. <laughs> Another three-ball attempt for North. Too strong there. There's a rebound gotten to by Cal Green. Long interior pass. Trying to start the fresh, for a fast break. Excuse me. Off the glass. No good. Rebound. Ooh, off the fingertips. And that's one he should have let out. Sometimes the ball just gets a little bit slippery out there with all that sweat. What can you do? Schulte back into the game for Ricker for Matamidai. Schulte with one point tonight. All the... Other points, the seven of the eight have come off the right arm of Will Underwood. The ball back in play here now, 10 30, 11 33. And we're counting here. Pull up jumper, it'll be two for Cal Green, too strong. Rebound gotten to again by Underwood. And from three point land, this time for Fox, it's no good as the ball battled for the Polars have it, and they'll be able to restart the possession back the other way. Driving into the lane this time, Kenny Daly, a rebound that time by Schulte. Fast break this time for Underwood. Underwood trying to work through traffic, dishes it to Fox. Back interior pass for Chapman. To the point, 4-3, Underwood got it to go. Well, that was a nice shot right there, that's wide open. Already 10 points in the ball game for Will Underwood. 12 to 11 the Polars lead. After the North High Polars led 12 to three, a nine, an eight point run here for Matamida. So work the perimeter again will be the Polars. Three ball, good oh, that time. Brandon Lankford give him six. Back to back threes there, Alex. There's, uh, there's not a lot prettier than that. And a dangerous turnover that time. The Zephyr fans wanted to go their way, but it was an unforced error that time off Brody Fox. And so it'll be an inbound coming up here for the North High Polars. And a couple of substitutions here. Langford will sit, as will Thomas. Replaced by Ben Tagland, the quarterback for the North High Polars and son of the football coach for that program. Trying to work inside, too, as Dallas Williams comes into the game. Now driving to the lane and a loose ball. We'll see if the Zephyrs can get the fast break. Here's Schulte coming up here on the near wing. Schulte will pull up. Goes back to the point that time. Schulte again. Trying to go interior. That time, oh, great. Ball moving again. Just mishandle it. This time he'll get to it. So and too strong. On that one is Underwood unable to convert off the glass and in. Rebound got to by Taglin. And again, just a little bit too fast on that rush there for Montemita. I denied them points. 
They just need to slow it down and definitely just just take a little bit more time, set up a, set up a good shot. Ball went off of the hands that time of Kenny Daly. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay here as it then went off the Zephyr Cal Green. 9.53 remaining here, first half. North leads 15 to 11. Brandon Langford, six points here from Matamida, and another two that time for Brandon Hickman. That gives him five on the night. Will Underwood, the leading scorer for Matamida, with 10 points, as it'll be Underwood himself. Trying to go inside for Schulte, and a broken up fast break this time as the Polish can head back the other way. Off the glass and in, Shahid that was Muhammad. A nice assist. And a nice assist, says Jordan. So we have the first timeout of the ball game. This will be Matamidai's timeout, their first of the game, as they trail 20-11 here. After pulling it to within one, the biggest lead of the night so far has been for the North High Polars as it sits at nine. Matamidai, the closest that they have been, is at a deficit of one. And Jordan, what's impressed you so far about what you've seen from the Matamidai Zephyrs, despite this fact that they're losing right now? You know, they're breaking down the full court press. They're, uh, uh, they just need, they need to find a little bit more perimeter shots, uh, take their time, um, you know, just, just make sure the pass is there. Don't worry so much about rushing the pass as opposed to, you know, really setting up the open guy. Meanwhile, on the other side for the North High Polars, certainly excellent perimeter movement, but they're, the way that they work into the interior and on the fast break has been working for them as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it does, it does seem like, though, that they are taking a lot of outside shots, so I think that if Matamida can contain those perimeter shots, they're going to you know, find their way back in this game quicker than not. Upcoming schedule for the Matamida Zephyrs. On Friday, they will travel to Hastings to face off the Raiders and another Metro East Conference. They'll stay in the Metro East Conference a week from today as they'll face off against the Hillmary Pioneers right back here in Matamida. Then it looks like they'll make a little road trip back to Connell, Wisconsin, at Henry Sibley, and then at St. Thomas Academy. Meanwhile, back to action here with some more substitution as Ryan Mall comes into the ballgame. Ball pass in the interior. Brody Fox, good perimeter movement again. Great pressure by the North High Polars, and a stolen ball that time as Brandon Hickman takes it away from Fox. Interior pass for three. Ty Hill too strong. Ball bouncing up. Rebound gotten to by Chapter. And again, this full court press and the pressure that North High is putting on Matamida has just been fantastic. Oh, absolutely, Alex. They, that's got to be something that they work on all the time at practice. It's, it's a mastery skill. Let's put it that way. 20-11, North High leading the Matamidai Zephyrs. Long pass gotten to there by Fox. Again, the pressure applied. Gotten out to a three-point ball. It's good! Great three ball that time for Ryan Mall. His three first three points of the ball game. 20-14, North High leads. In the near side, Muhammad working back to the point. Got further there along. Strong pass. Ooh, great defensive effort by Dallas Williams to keep that ball in play. And pass for Taglin. To try to work around the point drive, whistle blows, a travel call, and it's going the other way. Looks like uh, looks like Matamida had a good 3-2 zone defense going on right there, and they were definitely able to contain the perimeter ball a lot better. That's something that we've noticed too, Jordan, is that just how well Matamida has done at defending the pain area. And you talk about points in the pain as a key to a success a lot of the time. And really, Matamida has done a very good job of containing that tonight. Oh, absolutely. There's been very few buckets down below in the paint. Uh, I, think, I think they're definitely now trying to focus up on that perimeter as they have, like we just said, you know, really contained that, that inside ball. Ball moving for Fox. He faked the three, got it in low on the far wing for Chapman. Chapman. Trying to work around the pressure. Ball's tipped that time, and it's gotten to again by Sean West Zimple. And another turnover. But here now the Polars regain it from three. Muhammad in and out of the arc. And the Zephyrs will try to slow things down. So here's Brody Fox back into the front court. They'll work it down in low. Further that time for Luke Ricker. Ricker. Oh, interior pass for Chetman. Oh, that didn't even need the glass. And a great. Shot oh. by Cole Chapman for his first two points of the night. Jordan, what would you like on that? You know, Alex, you don't see that post game anymore with that nice fancy sky hook, and that was pretty. Polar's back in the front court. They lead 20 to 16. Pass here along the wing now. Muhammad, Muhammad with two points on the night for the Polar's. Going back onto that far wing for Dallas Williams. Williams, another ball. 
Tried to work around the Taglin screen. Went interior diving for it, but unable to do so in his efforts forced a turnover. So here's Ricker now. He'll send it here to Moriarty to reset. The ball back into the front court here from the corner. Trying to drive here with plenty of space. Off the glass and in. He was looking for the foul, but Ryan Mall gives himself five points in the night. And his efforts have cut the North High lead to two. Here's Williams. Passing in low on the wing this time. Sean West Zimple. Back here, Zimple again from three-point land. It is off the rim and good. Rebound gotten through that time by the Polars. Off the back. This ball will stay here. Yeah, there was a nice block there by number 11. That looked, that looked pretty, Alex. Or I apologize, have. number 31. We're going to have another couple of substitutions here. As the ball will be retained in the North High possession. It will be Brandon Langford who has six points in the night. He will inbound the ball. And there's a Murray of middle school children now currently standing in front of us in the court. We'll have to ask him to move at some point, but we'll get to that when we get there. Back to the <laughs> perimeter here. It's gotten here now LeRon Thomas. Back for Brandon Langford at the point. Thomas, again, just absolutely no interior drive that the North High Polars can get on the stout Matamidi defense. Langford again, trying to drive in through as Thomas sent back here further now for Muhammad. Thomas again, Langford, they continue to work around that perimeter. Not a whole lot there. As you hear the chant of pass from the Matamidi faithful here. So try to work it back into the point. Interior pass that time, looking for Murphy. Ooh, and a block by Chapman. Ball stays here, though, as the Polars try to drive in and deny. And if you're North St. Paul, that's got to be disheartening to have that much possession and come away with nothing. Oh, absolutely, but that's what I was talking about, blocking out that perimeter, right? And then you make turnovers, and you start to take control of the game. Interior pass, Fox for three, too strong, and it hits the front iron. Meanwhile, on the fast break, here come the Polars driving into the bucket. Ooh, I thought he was going to get it, and it's taken away this time as Cal Green was there. And a fast break now for Matamidi for Fox off the glass it in, and we're tied at 20. Brody Fox with two. Underwood leads all scores with 10, 20 to 20, 508 remaining in the first half. The Polars will set up here on the perimeter. Looking to go on the far wing, West Simple. Langford again here. Laurent Thomas, he's got four for North High. They'll swing it around. Look at him just double up that perimeter. They're not wanting anything to fall from out there anymore. Thank you now, Muhammad to continue to work on that perimeter. Look at this defense here by Matameda. Deep three ball from a simple. He gets it to go, and the Polars retake the lead. Full court press back on here. As West Zimple with five now for the North High Polars. Can be gotten to here by Underwood with 10 of his own. Here's Brody Fox. Fox trying to work around the defensive. Good box out that time by the Polars as they'll try to drive in the lane. A three ball from the corners, no, and too strong. And the rebound gathered to by Laron Thomas as he'll re-enter the front court. Ooh, off the glass and in. Another two for Sean West Zimple. The action back and forth so fast here in these last two minutes. Meanwhile, the ball back here into the front court. It can be gotten to again here. Chapman has it. Gone to here. Fox for three. Too short on that one. It can be rebounded here by North. So we'll try to go back into the front court here. Muhammad for three. Oh, ho, ho, ho. such a sweet stroke by Shahid Muhammad. Five oh. points for him. And the Polars take the 28 to 20 lead as Matamidi will take a timeout with 3.43 remaining. And Jordan, that last couple of minutes, that was quite exciting. Oh man, that was back-to-back -back threes, couple of full court passes. Oh, it was pretty basketball, Alex. Point scores for the night, the leading one. Sean West Zimple has seven for the North High Polars. Shahid Muhammad with five, Brandon Hickman with five. Meanwhile, for the Matamidi Zephyrs, Will Underwood has 10, Ryan Mall has five. Brody Fox, Cole Chapman each with two apiece, and Austin Schulte with one for Matamidi. We take a look here at the team profiles. At home, Matamidi two and two. They're scoring 65 points a game while allowing 60. And their two conference losses were by three points and two points. So when you look at Matamidi and you see the win-loss, a little bit deceiving there. Oh, absolutely, Alex. I mean, when you're playing hard teams, you know, 
Man, the record doesn't really matter as much as it should. Speaking of playing hard teams all the time, the North High Polars started the season at 0-6 with a very difficult schedule, playing some of the team, the state's best. And I think we're seeing that a little bit here there as the ball taken away. Can be rebounded here outside. They try to move it back in the interior. Wide open look for three. He got it to go. A nice basket that time for Ty Hill's first three. And like we were talking about, the schedule of the North High Polars is very difficult, and really that's lended themselves to a five-game winning streak coming into this one tonight. Yeah, uh, five games in a, in a conference that they're in is just unbelievable. They're playing some phenomenal basketball. Hitman with another two, and after tying the game at 20, the Polars have re-extended the lead to 13. Ball back to the Montemitai front court. Double team, ball ripped away. This will be a jump ball. The arrow pointing Montemitai's way. We're going to have a substitution as well as Dallas Williams will come back in, replacing Sean West Zimple. And again, this double team that Matamita has had to face with how the Polars have been swarming the ball, that's difficult to try to deal with when you're facing that much pressure. Oh, absolutely. It, anytime you have a hand in your face creating, you know, that blockage from your next person, it just it makes it hard. Uh, you know, they just have to do a better, better job of, uh, you know, being being able to see their their you know their teammates right around the Chapman screen Fox back into the front court dishes it wide open look for three as Ryan Mall has eight on the night now it's a 10-point ball game yeah, that was a pretty release right there Alex 230 remaining first half 33 to 23 North High leads as the Polars will continue to work around the perimeter driving around traffic we have Kenny Daly on the ball or Ty Hill, rather, excuse me, from three-point land off the front iron and down. Rebound gathered to by the Zephyrs. They'll try to force it out, but again, the Polars take it away. We'll go all the way back to the perimeter reset. Interior pass. Looking, oh, the dunk oh. denied, but the foul. Wow. That was close. That was real close, but what an effort to get to the line by LaRon Thomas. Wow, I'd love to see a replay of that if we get a chance because that was beautiful drive to the basket and I thought good defense. Oh, absolutely, and those ups were phenomenal. It's the first foul of the game on North. It is a shooting foul, so Thomas will take two turns at the line. The first one bounces in and is good. That's five on the night for Thomas. We'll have substitutions as Chapman will come back into the game, as will Schulte for Matamidai as they'll replace Ricker and one other player. I don't know where he went to. He sat down right away. So we'll get that number to you in a minute. As Thomas will shoot again, his second shot. That one too strong. Rebound gotten to it again. The full court pressure on by North. A workout here to the near wing. Coming out of their own backcourt. Chapman, interior pass. And you think that after all the times that the, for, the full court press has been working, that quick ball movement that the Zephyrs have been doing. You think it would start paying off as a bay from Schulte. Not, not good that time. Rebound fought for in the paint. It's gotten to here. And it'll be another jump ball. This time the arrow faces the North Polars. Yeah, that was just some good defense and offense. Right, right off the bat right there, Alex. So ball regained by possession. Schulte on the baseline. Working there this time. Oh, hit the side of the net that time from Cal Green. He does not have any points in this contest tonight as Langford worked the ball in here to the near court. And again, the Polar set to work on the perimeter. Pass shot from the elbow there. It's rebounded by Chapman. As Chapman has five rebounds already tonight. It'll be Schulte here in the near court. 122 and counting remaining. 34-23 North High leads. So here's Chapman trying to work for Schulte around the double team. Well, we had a, plenty of space to pull up and shoot that one. Oh, trying to go around the back with the foul called. That'll be the first inside two minutes here for North, and that will send them to the line. I think that was more of just kind of an unintentional tie-up right there, Alex. Unfortunately, the foul goes Monomita's way, and we'll see, you know, hopefully the inbound works out here. And so the foul will come here under the near sideline. Schulte is able to get it on the inside, interior pass. It's Chapman on the wing. 
Dishes the ball to the far corner again for three from Underwood. It's too strong, and now the Polars can take the ball back the other way. Here's Dallas Williams. Williams with plenty of space. Dishes it out wisely, trying to drive in. Oh, the stutter step, the Euro step. Almost working that time for the Polars. As again, the full court pressure on for Matamida. Here's Chapman. Chapman trying to find anybody to pass to. He already picked up his foot. Schulte again on the pressure. He's got to move the ball. They'll try to get into the front court again here. Here's Ricker. Ricker driving into the lane. Oh, has a foul call there, and that will send Matamida to the line. Was that all? That foul will go on Brandon Hickman, or not Brandon Hickman. They officially put it up as Dallas Williams. That's his first. Team fifth of this first half. Only one foul called for Matamida, and it will be Luke Ricker held pointless so far in this one. As he makes the first one now, Jordan, let's say you're the coaches for the Matamidi Zephyrs. As we're nearing halftime here, you're facing a nine-point deficit. What's the adjustment that you make if you're I mean, Matamidi? I mean, as I've said, Alex, I think the big thing here is got to defend that perimeter. That's, that's where the bulk of their points are coming from. I mean, they've got good shooters out there, right? We've got good defenders, too. So, you know, I think if they get out there and they, they start really really defending that perimeter well, it's going to be a lot different ball game in the second half. Williams at the point, plays catch with Langford, trying to drive it in the paint, dishes it out here. Ooh, I've been driving a little stutter step there. Oh, I don't think he was looking for that pass. Ooh, but the oh, the sky hook that time for LaRon Thomas. He's got seven points as the Polars lead by 11. Back into the front court again. They keep working the three ball from that corner spot for Underwood. The hot hand has gone cold as the horn sounds. The Polar faithful wanted a shot at the buzzer. They didn't get it. And you see head coach Damian Johnson looking for some humor with his player there. But so far at the half, 36-25, North High leads. And we talked a little bit about Matamidi, what adjustments they might want to make here in the halftime. But if you're North High on the other side, what's the conversation in the locker room for those guys? Well, you know, Alex, I think it's uh, I think it's all around a good atmosphere going into that ha that locker room. I think they've been playing good defense. Obviously, they're finding their open man on the perimeter. They're driving when they can. I think maybe just making you know a, a few smarter passes, uh, something to that effect might might really help them. Your leading scorers here in the first half for the Montemita Zephyrs. Will Underwood has 10 points. Ryan Mall has eight for the Zephyrs. Meanwhile, on the side of the North High Polars, Leron Thomas and Sean West Simple each with seven, as does Brandon Hickman and Shahid Muhammad with five. We'll be back in a couple of minutes for the start of the second half. This is your home for Montemita Boys Basketball. It's SEC Sports. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. With macular degeneration, you lose your central vision. You have a blind spot right in the center of your face, so I can't actually see your face. So even that little circle in which I could see became a big blur. I was 65 when I first was diagnosed with glaucoma. There were no symptoms. I had no headaches. Three million Americans have glaucoma and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. You lose mobility, independence, changes your entire life. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. My husband tells me that I have beautiful brown eyes and I don't want to lose that. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. Since the moment you were born, I've made a thousand wishes. Wishes for your future in a world that's changing fast. For all of the things you may one day do. Do play and laugh. Do win and lose. Do learn from your mistakes and challenge yourself to grow. Do not be afraid or make decisions based in fear. Do it all with confidence and with kindness and strength. Do call your mom and ask her for advice. And always do your best to remember that no matter what you do in this life, what matters to me is that you keep doing I love you always, Mom. Some kids never smile. 
They're embarrassed by their crooked teeth. They want braces like the other kids, but their families can't afford them. Some may even try to straighten their teeth themselves. That can make everything worse. Luckily, there's Donated Orthodontic Services, a program from the American Association of Orthodontists. It helps provide orthodontic treatment to kids and teens whose families can't afford it. For kids who apply, are approved, and are matched with a volunteer orthodontist, it can be life-changing. Their treatment is in the hands of an expert, a licensed local orthodontic specialist who improves their smiles by correctly aligning teeth and jaws. Some kids think they'll never smile again, but donated orthodontic services may help them smile with confidence. To link to the application and eligibility requirements, visit aaoinfo.org. My husband is a wonderful man. He's a great father, funny and loving when he's not drinking. When he drinks, he becomes a complete stranger, angry and mean, not the man I fell in love with. I've become really good at pretending everything's okay for the kids' sake, but it's taking a toll on me. I'm so angry that my husband chooses alcohol over us. If he really loved us, he'd stop drinking, right? My counselor suggested I try Al-Anon family groups. At first, I didn't understand why she wanted me to go. I'm not the one with the problem, but I'm glad I went. I heard people's stories, and they sound exactly like mine. I knew I was in the right place. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? You are not alone. Al-Anon or Alateen can help. For more information, call 1-866-200-0033 or visit alanon.org slash hope. Drownings are the number one cause of accidental death for young children. Simple safety steps are the best way to prevent these tragedies. Make sure kids learn how to swim. Designate an adult water watcher to watch kids in and around water. Save the phone calls and texts for when the kids are out of the water. Properly fence all pools with fences at least four feet high and with self-closing, self-latching gates. When above ground pools aren't in use, remove the ladders. When pools aren't in use, cover them. Teach kids to stay away from drains. And if a child is missing, check the pool or spa first. Consider the steps you take, then add a few more. Because you never know which pool safety step will save a life. Until it does, simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. Montemidi High School here at the half. Montemidi trailing by a score of 36 to 25. Jordan Gustafson out to us dead. And Jordan, we talked about before we went to break about the adjustments that North and Matamidi needed to make here in the second half. Again, what does Matamidi need to do to close that deficit? Because they were close and yep. they were tied for a couple oh, of Oh, absolutely, Alex. You know, I think I think the biggest thing here is they need to guard that perimeter. I think they're getting too many open looks around the outside. Uh, if they can start to do that, we can definitely, definitely take away their outside game. Well, we also talked too about North High and the adjustments that they've made as the team's return to the court here. What does North need to do here in the second half to make maintain the lead and they've really done well at moving the ball around the perimeter but that inside that's been a struggle for them yeah you know they're not really bringing the ball in very well uh i think i think they've got the outside looks right so that's step one step two is once they do that they create the inside open person if they can find that person and score some easy inside the paint buckets they've got it locked down will underwood with 10 for the zephyrs and three players with seven points for north high again you look there the past 10 matches between these two schools very close very competitive between two teams that used to see each other frequently in the playoffs but now different classes that conference rival still bit still breeds strong oh absolutely alex i mean I, even even the one last february two point game i mean emotions are in high right so Let's see where this one goes, but I think if they make those adjustments, it's going to be a really interesting second half. Well, familiarity certainly breeding contempt between these two schools. As long as it stays cool and contested, we will be back for the start of the second half of this one. This is your home for Matamidi Boys Basketball on SCC Sports. Awesome. 
We'll send the screens out of that. Every empty seat at a concert, game, or special event is a missed opportunity to say thank you to America's heroes. Donate your extra tickets to VetTix. Give something to those who gave. Go to VetTix.org. You're home before sunrise. On top of the house, the kids, and our future. The smell of your cooking is our alarm clock. My Shiro's day is never done. So let's start saving a little more now so we can feel prepared for retirement. A free three-minute online chat can give us the personalized tips we need so we can live our lives to the fullest. Visit asiaretirement.org slash Shiro. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I am a 16-year-old boy who just got my first job to help feed my little sisters. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. People you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Start of the second half here, 36-25, North High leads. It will be North ball to start this second half as Monomedi won the opening tip and took it and promptly had a fast break. That went nowhere. And so far, really strong performance here from North High as they have three goal scorers with seven points apiece. Two of them on the court right now, Laron Thomas and Sean West Zimple. As we are back underway here alongside Jordan Gustafson, I'm Alex Westeth. Here bringing you this basketball game, this Metro East Conference matchup. The Zephyrs enter at 2-2 two two in Metro East play, and the North High Polar is a perfect 4-0. and oh. Again, good ball movement here around the perimeter for North as they'll try to go in here. Here's Langford. They'll work around their perimeter again. It's almost, Jordan, predictable how much they're going to use the ball around the perimeter, and it feels to me, as not an educated basketball fan, as though they don't really have any plays. It's yeah, you know, it, it definitely does just does uh, seem like they're just designed all around that perimeter, just pass it back and forth, pass it back and forth. Hopefully something opens up down, down below like that, like right there. Um, you know, that being said, once that pass is made inside, you do see that person, whoever the defender is, roll back in towards the person, leaving the perimeter open once again. Zephyr's back into the, their own front court. The leading score for them. Will Underwood, he had 10, but cooled down in the second half of that first half. And again, a missed shot that time as the Polars will take it back into the front court as here's Langford. Langford, three ball, Muhammad. It's good. Off the brim a couple of times and in. And for Shaheed Muhammad, a player that, Jordan, you were excited to watch, he's got eight points on the night. Yeah, he's been playing strong basketball. Uh, you know, they're definitely, and the takeaway right there. Off the glass and the foul, he'll shoot two. And the player, Shaheed Muhammad, has certainly tried to take over this game. Oh, absolutely. But you know what? Uh, North St. Paul, as a whole right now, is just playing some phenomenal defense. I think, I think the Zephyrs need to tighten in, rein in, breathe a little bit, and I think they'll still be okay, though. Muhammad averaging 19 and a half points per game. He heads to the line for the first time tonight. His first basket from the line is good. He'll shoot again, 40 to 25 the lead here. So it's nine points now for Muhammad. 
And he will convert that second time, giving him an even 10. 41 to 25 is Zephyr's lead. And again, the full court press, Jordan, we were talking about at the half. Certainly tiring as the runner that time. Rebound gotten to here by Underwood. Big three and too strong on that as it hits the back iron. There's the ball held in right on the baseline as they'll go back into the front court. But Jordan, us, we were talking at the halftime about the effectiveness of a full court press and how the depth of a team's bench can certainly come in to factor extending it over the course of the game as a three ball there. Deep from the corner, Muhammad now 13 points. Oh wow, Alex, yeah, that was a shot. Talk about a deep three. Uh, but yeah, as you mentioned though, uh, you know, you gotta, have the, you gotta have enough squad, right, to pull off an effective full court press. Otherwise, otherwise you're gonna roll yourself out and run out of gas. Well, Muhammad on the assist there. And another two points for Sean West Simple. And an immediate timeout by Matamidi as they have allowed an incredible 13 points and a 13 to nothing run to start this second half. And it seems so far that the adjustments just haven't been quite made by Matamidi yet in the second half. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. That's a smart timeout right there. They really need to regroup, recenter themselves, and, you know, just kind of discuss that game plan. I'm sure what the coach is probably telling them right now is exactly what we talked about. You know, just cover that perimeter, right? That's, that's where the points are coming. We talked earlier in the broadcast about how the North High Polars started the season with a record of 0-6 overall. But when you look at the roster, they're playing some of the, team, the state's powerhouses in multiple classes. Losses to Creighton Durham Hall, De La Salle, Minnehaha Academy, and a 14-2 Spring Lake Park team started their season. In addition with Lake Conference opponents, the Adina Hornets and the Eden Prairie Eagles. That's 0-6 without any context looks kind of bad. But when you look at the opponents and how state tournament champions are their losses, you start to think second times about that. Oh, absolutely. It's like we mentioned earlier, Alex. That record really isn't a true record when you're playing the hardest teams first. Should be mentioned a 86-69 loss to Minnehaha Academy for the Polars on December 11th. The Minnehaha Academy Red Hawks defeated a very potent team from California Target Center. A team that held LeBron James Jr., Bronnie James, as well as Zaire Wade, the son of NBA retiree, now Dwayne Wade. And so some talent there as the ball goes out of bounds, and it will stay here in possession of the North High Bowlers. Or it'll be Matamidi's ball, rather, on the inbound. It'll be Brody Fox. Fox with two points tonight for Matamidi. So he'll work on the inbound here. 14, or I'm sorry, 15-24 in counter. A 21-point lead here for Matamidi. Pass out to the outside wing. It's Cal Green. Over to here on the wing. Green pulling up for three. No good. A rebound gotten to here by Chapman. Trying to evade the pressure. He'll go himself. And one for the Zephyrs. That was some old school basketball right there, Alex. Just get the rebound, power it back up, draw the foe. It seems as though these two teams, Jordan, Vermont Amina and North High, are a tale of different eras, different styles of basketball. North High, a very modern, around the three-point arc style game. Maramira continues to work the interior. Oh, absolutely, Alex. You can definitely tell the different styles here. But again, I think that's because they're, you know, North St. Paul's focus is on that perimeter. They're not trying to bring it down low unless it's there. Ball here on the point here for Langford as he'll reset. Trying to work to the right around the defense of Cal Green. He's able to dish the ball off further for a screen that time for Muhammad. Muhammad working around Green into the traffic. Pass back out to the perimeter. We've gotten to here again. It's pulled up there by West Zimple. As he'll take it back into the center court area. Trying to reset, trying to dish a play. This is Langford again. He'll move it further along the perimeter. Trying to call it a play this time. It's gotten too further. And driving into the lane, West Simple with a pull-up jumper. Ooh, off the back iron and good. And for the sophomore of North St. Paul, 11 points on the night for him. Yeah, I think that was just uh, just a lapse in jumping out to the perimeter, and that caused the open down below shot. Great pressure again by the North High Polars, waiting for an opportunity here. As Fox will dish it further back to the point, trying to sit around, looking for a screen, but one doesn't get delivered. Gotten to here further now. Ricker, interior pass, looking for Chapman. Here's the old school style of basketball we were talking about. Looking interior, Fox off the glass. 
And then that's four now for Brody Fox in the deficit, 18 for the Zephyrs. Uh, that was a pretty assist right there. He waited for him to make that cut, and he just gave it right to him. Back in the front court now. Muhammad way downtown, NBA distance almost. And the rebound gotten to here by Ricker for Matamidi. He'll send it to the front court. Fast pass this time for Underwood, who's been stuck on 10 for quite some time. Pass is gotten to here now by Ricker as the Polars try to clear the zone. And it's off the glass and in for Chapman, I believe. There's another that? hook there, Alex. Ricker on the points, and again. Jordan Gustafson impressed by the hook that both of these teams have been showing tonight. Excellent touch and finesse. Oh, absolutely. You don't see that very often nowadays, you know? It's a, uh, it's an absolute, let's throw it up from three. But these guys are both, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with their uh, interior offense, too. Langford with another two. And again, they'll try to go into the front court here this time. Ricker, Ricker trying to go to the glass. Blocked nicely there by the Polars for three. Ooh, bouncing high into the air. Chapman got to it. The big man tries to put it up, no good that time. And they'll dish back to the perimeter. Deep ball for Underwood in and out of the rim. And it goes out of bounds, can be gotten to by the Polars, and they'll rule that he was in bounds. And North High can carry the ball back into the front court. Langford. Trying to work around now here, Muhammad with 13 points of the night. Pass inside is no good. We'll have some substitutions here as North High leads 50 to 32. Yeah, Alex, that was just a low pass, a little bit out of his reach. But again, hey, they've started trying to go down below with that passing. So who knows where this game's going to go? Ricker out of the game, back in for Austin Schulte. Schulte with one point so far from the free throw line tonight for the senior. And again, this Monomedi Zephyrs team playing out of a very tough four AAA section in men's basketball. Working around the perimeter, interior pass looking in for Chapman, and he gets another and one situation. You know, Alex, that's there, it seems like, almost every time. I think it's just, uh, you, you know, once he started finishing, yeah, that guy's going to be unstoppable. That's a second team foul of the second half for North High. The first foul of the evening on Brandon Lankford, and it'll be a and one conversion opportunity for the three-point play for Cole Chapman, who converts eight points in the night for him. Ryan Mall has eight points as well for Matamidi. Ten points for Underwood. He's been stuck on that for a while. We'll see if he'll be able to break that spell in just a moment. Back into the front court now for North High. Driving into the lane. Oh, the Euro step. Basket is waved off for a travel. Yeah, unfortunately, he took one extra step there. They don't catch it in the NBA, but they caught it here. Well, now, Jordan, we've talked about so many times in different settings where the Euro step can be one of the most beautiful plays when done well, but it can also terribly backfire. Why do you think that is? You know, it's, it's hard to really control that extra step. You know what I mean? So depending on the size of the player playing, one extra dribble could be the difference between the travel and a bucket. LeRon Thomas tried to do the around the world, but he was able to draw the foul. It will be a shooting opportunity here, the second team foul. For Matamidi, the first of the night on Brody Fox. They only had one foul in the first half as Thomas will head to the line with seven points on the night. Still shot too strong. We'll have some more substitutions as Dallas Williams replaced Brandon Langford. And back into the game will be Ryan Mall, who will replace the ice cold Will Underwood and with 11.34 remaining. North High leading 50 to 35. Second shot this time for Thomas. Dribbles a couple of times. Bucket is up, no good, so 0 for 2 from the line. An uncharacteristic, even at the high school level, to see players go 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Absolutely, but obviously getting winded has something to do with that. You know, you can only do so much, and uh, when you're giving it all you got out there on offense and defense, sometimes, even though they call it free throws, they're not free. Muhammad with the dish trying to work. Interior pass. Oh, but he got the foul. And again, heading to the free throw line. It'll be Ty Hill. And again, you think that the difference in this game between Matamidi coming back to be competitive in this contest is the foul situation. They were so strong in the first half. But in the second half, it would appear that they've gotten a little sloppy. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. You know, I, I'm not sure if it's just they're getting a little bit tired out there or what it is, but, I mean, 
definitely got to play smart out there on defense. There's a difference between stealing the ball and uh, you know getting a little bit of body in that too. Second shot due up here for Ty Hill. And second straight possession that the Polars have been on the free throw line. As it's five points in the night now for Hill. 52-35 the lead as the clock ticks down here. 11 minutes remaining. Schulte pulled it up. Didn't have to, though. I thought he could continue driving along that baseline. And a pass here on a fast break now for North High. Up and trying to go in. Not good enough that time. The rebound control here by North High right on the baseline. Oh, I thought he walked there. And again, the Zephyr fans think so too, Jordan. Yeah, that was a travel, definitely, Alex. Unfortunately, you can't call everything because you can't always see everything. So the Polars with a fresh possession will reset. Again, no shot clock at the high school level yet. But a conversation had at the Minnesota State High School League level where there are players that want it, there are coaches that want it, but there are also some that don't. And Jordan, as we wait for the drive there, the foul on the interior, what's your opinion on the idea of adding a shot clock to high school basketball? You know, I can see both sides of it, absolutely. However, that being said, a lot of these guys are preparing for something else later on, you know? So I think in order to get them ready, you need to incorporate that shot clock. If you have any comments or critiques about the idea of a shot clock, feel free to send us to those of us on Twitter at Alex West and we'll certainly follow up with you on your comments there. Again, good ball movement here by North. They'll work around the perimeter. Deep three ball again, and it's good. And Brandon Hickman with 10 now on the night for North High. And just lethal from the perimeter have been the North High Polars. Yeah, you know what, Alex? That wasn't just a three. That was a three from another level. And he's hit a couple of those tonight, so... He's practicing that in the offseason, let's put it that way. Ryan Mall with 10 now in the last bucket here for Matamidi. 55-37. The Zephyrs trail. The space is given and signaled for us. It's gotten to again here now by Hickman. Working further along for Dallas Williams. Williams works around the Taglin screen. Williams pass out to the far wing. Trying to work around. Oh, a good move. That is dirty by Brandon Hickman for three. Yeah, you can't stop that, Alex. Did you set, see that separation he created there? Once he was able to do that, it was just a matter of time before he dropped it. Here's Underwood again. He hits his first bucket of the second half. He regains the lead with two. And that's 12 points in the night for the uh, freshman, Will Underwood. That's six foot tall. The player listed as a guard. And the Polars will regain possession here once again. Yeah, They're Alex. Sorry, rather, yeah, Alex, a, a guy, when he's a freshman, I mean, coming into this level playing, he's only going to get better. Just stay healthy. Driving to the lane, Hill dishes it out further along the wing this time. Oh, God, great ball movement here again by the Polars. Williams looking here on the far wing again for Daly. Or for Ty Hill, rather, excuse me, Hill trying to drive around. Good pressure, good defense that time by the Zephyrs. Off the glass, too strong, and the rebound gotten to here by Cole Chapman for the Montemita. Eating points quickly in a hurry. 8.32 and counting. Zephyr's trail by 19. Trying to drive to the lane. Underwood. Underwood. Ball up here. Gotten to by Chapman. Wide open in the corner, but nobody saw him. Off the glass. And in, though, was Ryan Mall as Aaron Moriarty opened right in front of us, Jordan. And odd that they chose to go back into the interior. You know, yeah. oh, man. That was, that was a beautiful assist right there. He had his eyes wide open. Saw the guy coming. Knew right where to put it. Working out on the perimeter again. It's Brandon Hickman with 13 points on the night for the Polars. Dishes it further for Ty Hill, who has five. Working here now for Sean West. Zimple rushed to the interior off the backboard. Wrestled away. And another three ball too strong that time. As a rebound can be corralled and gotten to here again by Ty Hill. I'm sorry, not Ty Hill. That's Cal Green for the Zephyrs. Green trying to dish it back inside. Looking for Moriarty, who's fouled. It'll be the third team foul of the night. Not a shooting foul, I don't think. It should be a sideline inbound. No, it'll be a baseline inbound up coming here from Matamita. Yeah, he looks to be a little bit shaken up there too, but hopefully he's okay, Alex. It looks like they will take Cal Green out for a moment. He'll be repa replaced by Luke Rickers. Rotation continuing to line here from Matamita. As the ball inbounded by Ryan Mall from the baseline. Mall passed it to the point. Try to go further here now, looking to set Underwood. They continue to try to set Underwood as their focal point player here. Now a chance in the interior for Mall, and wide open for three. Moriarty missed it wide to the right. Now the fast break here for the Polars, trying to work inside. Hickman, oh, oh. What a block! 
Get up, young man, Aaron Moriarty. Back the other way, Chapman to the hook, and one! Oh, Alex, that was pretty. Started with the defense, rolled right into the offense. Well, we have seen some beautiful basketball tonight. It'll be the third and one chance for Cole Chapman, who has 10 points on the night for the Monomedi Zephyrs as they trail by 15, 48, I'm sorry, 58, 43, 720 to play. And we'll have more substitutions as Langford will come in to replace Dallas Williams. And also back in the game, Laurent Thomas to replace Taglin. He converts the and one. It's 11 points now for the senior 6'10". Very big man, tough to defend against and really tough to drive on as a three ball is too strong. Chapman again with the rebound. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. That is a big guy right there. And you know, what makes it even better and makes him more dangerous is the fact that he can convert those free throws and those inside plays. Chapman. Ooh, trying to take a screen ball back into the front court. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh I don't know about that. Chapman trying to work in with the Euro step. Oh, pass there. He's fouled. And that will send Underwood to the line as the Polar is starting to get in foul trouble here in the second half as this will be their fifth of the half. Yeah, Alex, that's going to weigh in a lot here coming down the stretch. You definitely got to be careful not to commit, <coughs> excuse me, not to commit anymore. That's a second foul on Brandon Langford, who has eight points tonight in addition to the two fouls. The first shot is good for Underwood. That's 13 on the points now for 13 points of the night for him. For the guard averaging five points, five and a half points a game. Certainly having a standout performance tonight. Oh, absolutely, Alex. And you can tell too. He's definitely, definitely on his game tonight. Polar's back into the front court. They'll try to work around. Muhammad further here now for Langford. Was simple, and again for Langford as a work back for Muhammad. Muhammad trying to work around the defense. Try to continue to work around there. And now it got to here again for West Zimple. West Zimple trying to drive. Ooh, almost lost his step. Great perimeter movement. Wide open. Muhammad. It's good for three. What can you do, Alex? You can't stop that. He's done it time and time again now. That's 16 points on the night for Shaheed Muhammad. He leads all scorers tonight. And again, great ball movement here. Pull up three and two short on that one. And again, good ball movement here is Ricker. Ricker trying to dish it further back. Underwood will have to go back to get to it right near the half court line. It's Chapman trying to work through the perimeter. Maul will have to dish it out again for three for Underwood. And it's good. Yeah, Alex, that was a nice shot. He just turned around, saw the wide open guy, sunk the three. That's 16 points on the night now for Underwood. 61-48. The Polars lead by 13. Drive for Muhammad. Oh, oh, so sweet as he gets that one to go. And I mean, what can we, what else can we say about Shahid Muhammad tonight? You know, it, yeah, it, it just seems like, you know, you just can't stop him right now. He, he caught fire early and he is just, just playing it on. Ball movement continues around the perimeter. He tries to get further this time. Ricker. Ricker driving in the lane. Oh, oh and he charge. got the offensive foul call. Yeah, he set up right outside the paint there and just let Drew in the body. Now, as let's say that you're someone driving into the paint and you see that defender step, claim their spot, be ready to take that charge. What adjustment do you make as the offensive player? Well, you know, nowadays, that's where that Euro strep would come into play, right? So you step around him as opposed to into him. That being said, it's one of the hardest things to do. So the baseline inbound here for the Polars. They lead 63-48, five minutes and counting remaining here in the second half of play. Again, the Polars, a perfect 4-0 and oh in Metro East play, and the Zephyrs at 2-2. Two and two. Both teams have six wins on the season. Polars with one more loss at seven. So just under 500. By the North High Polars. Meanwhile, the Zephyrs fit, sit at exactly 500 for Keith Newman in his 14th season. 240 wins, 138 losses. Who's been around this program for quite some time. As a rebound gathered here by the Polars. They try to lay it up and in, and it is good. And that's another two points for these um, Polars. The first two for Aaron Murphy tonight. Meanwhile, foul on the outside, well away from the basket. But again, if you're North High, you got to start thinking maybe we don't want to give Matamidi a chance to get back in the game with the foul. Yeah, that's six. That's six right there. So we, uh, they don't, if they're not careful, they're going to fall into the bonus quick. Brody Fox on the perimeter waiting for his teammates to 
Creates a motion green interior pass for Underwood who pulls it up and hits it to go. And that will be 18 points on the night now for Underwood who leads the Zephyrs in scoring. Shahid Muhammad has 18 on the other side for North. Yeah, both those guys are just playing phenomenal. They're playing a, a basketball right now. And, you know, and a lot of it's their teammates creating that opening for them. So, I mean, while that's happening there, they're just, they're getting open. I mean, it's that simple. Exactly what happens there. Shaheed Muhammad now at 21 points on the night with another three ball. And that spot on the wing, right between the corner and the point, seems to be the spot where he's setting up. And he's been open so many times tonight for North High. Yeah, you know, it, it it's practiced. I mean, at that point, you know, once or twice, you're definitely thinking, OK. But another one, I mean, it's practice. Oh, wow! The alley oop that time from Muhammad to LeRon Thomas. Wow! Oh, and a foul there on the outside, too. Wow! And North High putting on a show in the air tonight. Yeah, Alex, uh, man, that was pretty. That's all I can say. We'll have some more substitutions here as the crowd still a buzz at the alley oop play. As Williams and Hickman will come back into the game for North High. And there will be a foul on the outside that'll push Matamida into the bonus, or yeah, Matamida into the bonus, down 20 with 321 remaining. Again, you just saw the replay of that alley oop. Absolutely spectacular stuff. Oh, absolutely, Alex. Anytime you can get the crowd into it like that, that's that's just good basketball. Ryan Mall hits the first one of the one and one situation here in the first edition of the bonus. Another shot, no good. Rebound hits off the glass. Trying to fight for it. Chapman gets it. He gets fouled on his own. And right back to the line goes Matamidi. Uh-oh. That's number eight right there for him. So they are, I believe, close to that bonus. I, I, I want to say, and I could be wrong, I want to say nine is the double bonus. And that sounds right. So here's Chapman. He'll get two shots on the shooting foul. He hits one. That's 12 points in the night for him. As his efforts have pulled it back to 18, we're going to have more substitutions. Yeah, you know, Alex, he has been pure from that free throw line tonight. And, I mean, for a big guy, that's impressive. Be Ty Hill and Demarion Suttles coming back into the, in, into the game for the first time in the case of Suttles as the Polars lead 70 to 53, three minutes and counting. Left to go in this one. We hope that you have enjoyed it here on SEC Sports. We'll have bat more basketball for you again on Friday. As a three ball this time, too strong off the hands of Hickman, who has 13 points here. And again, the full court press still in effect for North High. Just the outside, looking for Underwood for three. Oh, thought he had that perfectly drained up. He's able to get to it again for Fox and one. That was a nice little hesitation right there, Alex. And then he just put it right in, drew the foul, and he's going for a third. Jordan, are you surprised that the Polars are still rolling with the full court press up by 17 with two minutes and change left? You know, uh, no, I'm not. And you know, that's just because nowadays the game has evolved into something where Let's score, right? Score, score, score. And then just kind of go from there. And no need to change what's working. Ben Taglin back into the game. He replaces Aaron Murphy. They try to, again, now Matamita employing their version of the full court press. Pressure given that time on Ty Hill, who gets the ball into the front court here. Further now for Demarion settles the 5'11 sophomore guard. Puts it inside further. That time for Hickman. Rebound gotten to by Chapman, who's been a rebounding machine tonight for the Matamita Zephyrs. Yep, he can score, he can rebound, and he can make that end, that end one shot. So what more can you ask out of your big guy? Dangerously close to a backcourt violation, but converting that time, Ryan Mall, he's got 15 on the night for Matamita. And back into the front court. Ooh, it bounced around there. Ooh, rebound gotten to there. Nice effort that time by Taglin. Taglin will dish the ball back to the points. Gotten to here now by Williams. Ooh, open for Taglin. He'll go back to the perimeter despite being open. Trying to Euro step in. Tries to get it off to go. And it's rebound that has been gotten to here by the Zephyrs on the fast break now. Underwood. Ooh, he tried to go on the other hand. And a good job of rebounding that ball by Taglin. Meanwhile, back out to the outside. Williams here. Looking further wide open for Hill. Ooh, almost had it to go. Meanwhile, the Zephyrs can try to get back to the front court, needing back at the basket. And he gets the end one there. I tried to say buckets and baskets at the same time. 
Yeah, Alex, again, once again, driving that in there, taking the foul, making the basket. It's all about converting that shot. If they could do that, they can climb their way right back into this. That's nine points in the night now for Fox, his substitutions again for the Polars. Shaheed Muhammad, Laron Thomas, both return to the game. Muhammad with 21 points in the night. Laron Thomas with nine of his own. And the Polars with a 70 to 60 lead with a minute and 40 remaining. Zephyrs are in the bonus as he converts the and one play. They might be in the double bonus before too long. And only five fouls committed in this half for the Zephyrs. Oh, and a steal this time. Trying to go up. Oh, too strong. He's trying to get back there. Oh, they're trying to dish the ball. It will stay here. And a great steal by Cal Green to start that play. Oh, absolutely. He was ready for that, too. And that's where that full court press comes into play. North has led by as many as 20. Matamidi has not led in the game, but they have been tied. Chapman sets a screen for Underwood. So he'll try to drive into traffic. Underwood. Had it gotten further this time for Maul. Maul trying to drive in the lane. Fox, no good. But he picks up the rebound and a good effort there that time by Chapman. As we're going to have a foul. And once again, heading to the line, Brody Fox. And foul trouble becoming the issue here for North. Oh, absolutely, Alex. It's as we talked about earlier, those falls, uh, man, they are now taking their toll come crunch time. Fox to the line. He's got 10 points. 70 to 61. But that's a 10th team foul for North High in this half. He gets the first one to go. It's an eight-point game. At what point, Jordan, if you're Matamidi, we see a lot of times in basketball, in a close game, you intentionally foul. Do we see that for Matamidi yet? You know, Alex, actually, that's where that shot clock really, really starts to take effect here. Uh, with that being said, I think that they've still got time. They don't need to rush it. They just need to play smart basketball. And if they can do that, then they can come back in. But with plays like that, that may not help that. Not smart basketball that time for Matamida as Hickman converts an easy fast break. 15 points in the night for him. The lead back to 10 inside a minute to go. Time running out here on Matamida. It may be over for them. Chapman trying to work around. Good defense by Tago. Oh, and a tip ball that time off the hand of Laron Thomas goes out of bounds. And will stay here. And probably a good thing, too, when the ball goes out of bounds to be able to set up that play. Absolutely. They needed a minute to refresh themselves, catch their breath, and, you know, see what they could do here with the ball. So it's a 10 point game, 72 62, 48.1 remaining. Got the pass here from the interior, this time coming from the freshman Underwood. Underwood looking for Chapman. Chapman will tee it up himself. Too strong. Rebound gotten to by Underwood. Underwood trying to drive. Wide open look. Four, Fox. Four, three. Whistle blows. And he's fouled. Oh, Alex, that's three shots right there. He was definitely on the perimeter. If he's not careful, he's going to get a tee here. Well, the North High fans don't necessarily like it, but it will be a three shot penalty here. Yeah, absolutely. Emotions start to take play when something like that happens, but I mean, the ref's got a better view than I do. I know that. So we'll have a substitution here now. It was, it was Laron Thomas who committed the foul. He'll be replaced by Sean West Zimple. Two more shots due here for Brody Fox. Again for the senior guard. Averaging 17.7 points a game. Certainly in that realm tonight. He's at 12. The chance for 14 here. The second shot is good. He'll get one more. It's not often, Jordan, that we see a foul like that called well after the shot had been released. No, usually they're a little bit quicker to call that. And I think, you know, I, again, I didn't see it. But I think definitely, especially when you're dealing with a close game like this, you got to be on those calls right away. But, you know, it doesn't always happen. We'll see the foul game called there. That's the first inside at two minutes for Matamidi. So they have no more fouls to give at this point. It'll be Langford inbounding from the baseline. Langford looking for traffic, and it will be a timeout called on the North High, for the North High Polars. 37.2 remaining, North leading 72 to 64. And Jordan, your first introduction here to Metro East basketball. It's been a fun one tonight. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's been some phenomenal plays, some deep threes, and alley-oop. I mean, that's high school basketball, right? If you're interested in volunteering for SCC Sports, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. The first way to do so is email arlen at scctv.org, and he can help set you up with information. Otherwise, there's a phone number that you can call at 651-747-3821, and you can 
coming out and help us either on the camera side, operating some of the boards, or join us here for the broadcasting side of it. We are looking for additional announcers to help call our sports, especially as we proceed into the section playoffs and additionally into the spring sports as well with lacrosse and hopefully this year ultimate frisbee. You see our upcoming schedule, girls basketball, White Bear Lake versus a school of, that you're familiar with, Park of Cottage Grove coming up here on Friday, and then boys hockey on January 30th. Tartan versus South St. Paul. Jeff Disher and Will Anderson will be with you on the call for that one. Of course, Jordan being a part of the Park High School District. Yeah, hopefully someday my girl will be playing in that game. Let's see. Got a foul on the inside there. Oh, wow, nice pass all the way down the court. That's impressive. I like that. And so we have a chance here now. That'll send North High to the line, leading by eight. That puts them officially into the bonus now. This, of course, one of the most challenging parts of the game of basketball sometimes, that foul game at the end. Oh, absolutely, Alex. I mean, you know, emotions get, get tight early, early on, but then in a close game like this, like I said earlier, I mean, those fouls and those free throws start to really, really matter. Ryan Mall replaces Aaron Moriarty, 15 points in the night for Mall. The rebound there in the first miss. Zephyr's got to hurry as the full court press back in. Chapman, Chapman. Taking too much time here from Matamidi. Dishes the ball further here. The time to turn over Taglin is fouled, and he'll head to the line. And just not quick enough out of the backcourt for Matamidi. No, not at all, Alex. So with 26.3 left, 72-64. Matamidi leading, or Matamidi trailing, rather. Excuse me, Taglin will head to the line. He is pointless tonight. More of a distributor screen setter so far that we've seen for North. This is his first attempt at the free throw line. It is no good. And we'll get the rebound here. to will try to advance in the front court quickly now. Fox dishes that time for Underwood. Try to draw the contact. Moving quickly into the elbow. He got it to, well, he almost got it to go. And a dish back out again. Underwood for three. He got it. Hit. And we're going to have a tie. Whistle blows. It's a five-point game with 10.8 left. Yeah, you know, Alex, those, like I said, those free throws really start to take effect. And if you can start making a couple of those, hit a couple open shots, I mean, you're right back in this game, as you see right here. 21 points on the night for Underwood, who leads all Zephyr scores. Shahid Muhammad on the other side for North High leads all Polar scores with a total of 21. If we get the timeout here, 10.8, five-point game. And again, you assume that the foul game is going to come back in for Matamida. Oh, absolutely, Alex. They have to they have to stop that clock with with this amount of time left It's it's coming down to let's foul. Let's hope they miss. Let's get some shots up quick We mentioned uh, multiple times in the broadcast the North High schedule starting out very difficult But it seems to be getting easier over time as a couple of teams with one conference win Hill Murray St. Thomas Academy and the Simley Spartans coming up here for North High before a couple of difficult tests at White Bear Lake at Tartan on February 14th Valentine's Day will will be there for both the Boys Varsity Contest and the Girls Varsity Contest as the ISD 6-2 rivalry fills in another chapter between two schools that are always competitive when you're in the same school district. Oh, absolutely, Alex. I remember my, my rival school, and that was always intense. Daglin will inbound. He seems to be the go-to fouling victim here for Matamidi. We'll see if they're able to inbound it. Plenty of space. And they inbound that time to Muhammad. That's not the guy you want to foul, but they'll have to. And for the Zephyrs, they'll take it down to the other side of the court. 9.3 seconds left, a five-point game. So a two-possession game for Matamidi if Muhammad misses one. Yeah, you know what, Alex? That seems like the last guy you want to put on the line right now with as hot as he's been all game. I, I don't know. Let's see what happens. It's the third personal foul that time. And one of the Zephyrs, they have nine fouls. Quickly again with the end of the game being what it is. It's Muhammad's first attempt. No good. Chapman rebounds. They have to hurry into the front court. Interior pass to Underwood. Lost the handle on it. It's gone to here by North, and the clock may run out. Ooh, why? Ooh. And the whistle blows. The horn will sound. And it's a narrow five-point victory for the North High Polars. The Zephyrs wanted a jump ball there. Why do you think they didn't get it? You know, at that point, the ref, they're both down on the ground. They're just going to let that run out. And so the final score tonight here from the Matamidi Gym, North St. Paul 72, Matamidi 67. Leading score for North was Shaheen Muhammad with 21 points. Will Underwood with 21 of his own for Matamidi. And Jordan, for the Zephyrs, what do they need to do to come back in their next contest on uh, Friday at Hastings? What do they need to do in order to come away with a win? You know, I think the key to their game needs to be, again, guarding that perimeter. They were 
they were kind of destroyed by that perimeter, perimeter this game. Uh, you know, three after three after three. Once they made that, that adjustment, there was a lot less threes, and they, they had forced the other team to start driving it into the perimeter, or the paint. But I think it was too late, unfortunately. Meanwhile, on the other side of things for the North High Polars, they had led by as many as 20, but at the same time, that deficit kept getting close to zero. Monami and I never left in the game, but there were times where it felt close. What adjustments might North High make the next time that they play? I think they just can't get comfortable, Alex. They really need to need to make sure they stay in the game the whole time. Um, obviously, having enough bodies to stay fresh on that full court is crucial. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, just making sure that they take a minute to find the open player, that they make smart passes, good assists, and they follow up with rebounds. Well, Jordan, we want to thank you for joining us on tonight's broadcast. How do you think you did? Uh, I think it was my first night, and I liked it. That's good. Well, we're certainly hoping that we'll have you come on back, do some more basketball with us, and we hope that all the viewers enjoyed it as well. Meanwhile, we'll see you on Friday, White Bear Lake versus Park of Cottage Grove at White Bear State, and not White Bear Stadium, at the White Bear Gymnasium South Campus. We'll hope to see you then. For Jordan Gustafson, Arlen Becker, David Schuyler, and the entire SEC production crew, the final score tonight, Bonham and I loses North St. Paul 72-67. This is your home for Montemidai Boys Basketball. It's SEC Sports.